All right, a very big hello and welcome to Tom's Talk Time. Kim Valentine, okay. thank you so much for joining me. It's my pleasure. I'm so excited that you're here. So am I. All right, let's chat about neighbours. I think I read in a magazine years and years ago now. Careful what you read. That, <laughs> that you saw Kylie, your neighbours, mm -hmm. and desperately wanted to join. Yeah. So you enter the competition hundreds of times to yeah, win a day on the show. It's so true. Is that right? It is, it's true. When I was uh, a young'un, I filled out 150 entry forms in a competition to win a day on the set of Neighbours. One day, a tour. Wow. Pretty much like what you're going to do on Wednesday, yeah. of like one you've already done. Yeah. And I didn't win. You didn't win? I didn't win, but I've got 20 years. How about that? Well, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty cool, Pretty huh? determined. I know. And what about your sort of early days growing up? Was it always going to be acting? I didn't Is have that... a choice in the matter. I was two and a half years old and I knocked on the TV. Literally, my mum will tell you a true story. I knocked on the TV and said, inside. Oh my gosh. Isn't that spooky? Isn't that I know. bizarre? And so by the time I was five, I'd been dancing. I'd been doing dancing classes since I was three. And then by the time I was five, a talent scout came to my local dancing school looking for little kids to put in commercials. And then I had to go and do an audition. It was basically just go and have a photo taken, see if you were photogenic. Yeah. And me being me, I went in full costume. <laughs> You're right? And I'm trying not to swear because I'm a really bad swearer, so I'm going to try really hard okay. not to swear. Okay, all right. I, and a cape, right, over my costume. And I went into this meet and greet, really. You know, threw off the cape in dramatic fashion and burst into my own version of Oklahoma. <laughs> And uh, got the agent, nonetheless. They did the um, yeah. the photo shoot, the headshots, then and there that day. And I was five. And I started, five yeah, years I was old. Five. And so from there, I started That's doing amazing. commercials. Kept doing my singing, dancing, acting like, through the week and on weekends. And, and then, you know, commercials turned into TV shows and, and a lot of stage stuff growing up. I did a lot of stage stuff yeah. growing up. And, you know, just moved on and on and on and on and on until 17 and auditioned for Neighbours. So... I don't, I don't remember not doing this, this is just what I do. It's, you're born and bred. Yeah, How it's fantastic. weird because my mum and dad, at that point, they both worked in a factory. My, my dad was a sewing machine mechanic and my mum was a machinist and they worked in the lovable bra factory in Sydney. Wow. They made bras. <laughs> I, I still got an infatuation with bras because yeah, of it. Yeah, well you've grown up with it. Yeah, exactly. So it didn't come from anywhere, I don't have any background of it. I was just... Well that's pretty special in itself that, that yeah. you know, you found your sort of calling without... I'm very lucky, I think, that I haven't had to search for my passion and, and, yeah. and what it is I want to do. I'm, I'm really lucky in that respect that I've always known what it is I want to do. So you started your Central Neighbours back in 94. Yeah. You were 17. Yeah. And you grew up in front of Australia. I mean, was that a bit strange? <laughs> yeah, I don't know any different. So I I've got nothing to compare it to. It's just my reality. I don't think you can ever perceive yourself the way other people perceive you. Other people have grand ideas of what it's like, which are probably very, oh, I know, are very different to the actual reality. I think in hindsight, it's, it's a double-edged sword. It's kind of funky that there's kind of this record of my childhood and, and growing up from you know, a young woman into a grown woman. Uh, that's kind of cool and it's something that I can show my daughter and it's kind of a little bit of a legacy that I can leave that, like Beyonce says, I was here, you know, yeah. in some strange way. Yeah. But at the same time, it's also really embarrassing. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. Why does the past have to be so embarrassing I though? I don't know. I don't, it's bizarre. I don't know. Look, I, I've, I've learned to to love it. Like when and I look at the it. Yeah, embrace when I look at the photos, you know, with, when we first started on, on the show and I had my really long blonde hair and the Frizzy. high waisted jeans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And little crop tops and yeah. it was so tragic. I look at that now and I go, oh, that's so adorable. I can look at that and go, it's cute and not cringe at it anymore. Well, that's nice. good. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't have social media back then. Yeah. I feel sorry for kids now with social media. Everything kids do now is shared. So I'm kind of glad that when I was in that position, and young and dumb, it wasn't all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, it's now I'm a little bit older and wiser, because that would have been even more humiliating. I bet. Yeah. So this year, as everyone knows, Neighbours is celebrating 30 years on air. That is a remarkable achievement for anything. Why has it lasted so long? You know what? Because people like it. It's they really do. that simple. It's really that simple. People like it. People like the characters. People like the relatability. I think, I, don't know, I was talking about this the other day, I think it's a good mirror of um, 
normal everyday life. I was saying to someone, I really felt a sense of responsibility in that we were tackling issues that everybody in life tackles. Yeah. And, and we kind of had to lead by example in ways to deal with those issues and, and set a good example. And I'm so super proud of Libby because she was one of those characters that did lead by example. And I meet so many young women who come up to me and say, oh, I loved Libby when I was a teenager and she inspired me with her attitude, that's her really tenacity <laughs> and all that sort of stuff and her sense of justice. And yeah, that's fantastic. Isn't it? I feel so, that so super special? proud of that. So no. And do you know what else happened? Sometimes I'll be faced with something in life and it will be challenging. What would Libby do? And I do that! What would Libby I say, do? what would Libby do? <laughs> and I do, I do. I actually, I, I had a meeting with somebody the other week and I said, I've got to get my Libby on. You know, sometimes yeah. you've just got to, you know, you've got to face something head on. You've got to deal with something that's really challenging and really difficult. And I still say to myself, what would Libby do? Get your Libby on, Kim. Let's go. Wow. Put your knee-high boots on and, and go on the front foot and be brave. And I'm really grateful to her that she inspired me and, and really, really humbled that she inspired others as well. That's I think special. That's so good. It's so special. It is. Know. And now, as you touched on briefly earlier, Neighbours is all about relationships mm. and the intricacies in everyone's relationship. Now the Steph and Libby friendship is something that I think every Australian can relate to okay. and something that is just remarkably mm. special and really mm. has set the path for, for Neighbours. <laughs> but I want to draw your attention to some scenes surrounding okay. the baby drama oh, no. and Dan and that awful okay. tragedy. There's a particular scene where Steph is out the front oh, yes, go, and yeah. she's pleading for you to forgive her and remember yeah. her 11 years of friendship. So sorry. I don't I want to hear sorry. any pathetic excuses from you. How long? Were you and Dan together No, No, we weren't together, Libby. It, were, it was just one night. You've never wanted me to be happy, have you? You have destroyed every single thing I've ever no, cared about. No, that is not I true. I can't have babies because of you and your stupid motorbike. You would have taken Drew from me if you had the chance. And now, Dan, you picked the one thing you knew would hurt me the most. You're having his baby. A thing I couldn't do. Not only was that written and portrayed so well, but for me, and I, I really think a lot of other people, you and Carla, you've got this special, something special there that, of course, our hearts broke for Libby. But I couldn't help but feel sorry for Steph at the I same know, time. I know, so What was that like? Know. What, and I mean, playing that friendship for so long. I'm gonna cry, I'm gonna cry. There's so much of Steph and Libby, Kim and, and Carla, or Kimmy and Bonbon. Oh, it's, it's emotional. It's really emotional for both of us. So it was blurry where the lines, were drawn between us on screen and off screen. We would we would finish work after spending all day together, I'd get in the car and get on the phone. <laughs> I mean, we were that close, yes. you know, and, and a lot of that relationship was our relationship in real life. So when people admire the friendship, that's a real compliment to the two of us as women and as friends. And I think it's really important in this day and age that women support each other. Definitely. You know, because they can be so bloody bitchy. You know, we need to I have can. each other's backs. Yeah. And I love that about Libby and Steph. And I love that about Kimmy and Bon Bon, because we really did. That's That was real. That was 100% real. That's another thing I'm really proud of, that we led by example there. And when we had to fight, it was just awful. Kind of do the scenes and then afterwards just hug her and say, I'm so sorry, I'm so <laughs> sorry. I, it was awful having to do that and go to that place. And it was exhausting. Yeah, well, that's the other it. thing. I mean, mm. especially for Carla, what Steph has now gone through. It was awful. And all of that. I mean, it, watching it was oh. exhausting. And honestly, I think all of Australia's heart broke that oh, no. Libby I felt and for Steph... Bon bon because it just didn't end. It was kind of like a year. Yeah. You know, Libby was unaware for such a long time. Yeah. But Steph, for like a year, over a year, it was the same story. And she made it interesting for that whole time, you know how hard that is to do? Yeah. So she did a fantastic job, but my heart went out for her because she just had to keep playing the same note, but play it in an interesting way every time. And she did a great job. I think by the time we got to the, the peak of it and it all came out, we were so exhausted. Kind of fell over at the end of yeah. it. I mean, the big scene where 
I come out of the house screaming at her. We shot for hours and hours and hours. Really? Carla had lost her voice. I think somebody counted that she said she screamed Libby like 700 times. My gosh. Because she's out the front going, Libby! Yeah. Libby! Banging on the window. Banging on the window. I, I think somebody yeah. counted it was around oh 700 gosh. times. So it was, you know. But we felt a real responsibility because this storyline had gone on for over a year. And the audience was waiting for Libby to find out what she's going to yeah. do. Oh my God, People had she's going to lose sides. it. She's going to crack Libby, it. Yeah, that's Steph. right. What's going to happen? So we had to really step it up and we really did feel as though there's high expectations here. We need to deliver and do our absolute best. And I think we did. I think we. I, I think, think so too. I think we did a really good job. And it means as much to us as it does the audience. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's one thing that makes the show so popular is because we love it as much as the people who love it love it. So, that's probably true. Yeah. <laughs> now, not only that storyline, yeah. but you've had so many amazing, magical, soapy storylines. We've seen you grow as a fiery teenager to a mature married woman then to a widow, yeah. as well as losing several babies, <laughs> being in a horrific motorbike accident and going through an unexpected labour at a rodeo. Oh, a rodeo. How did that change you as an actress? And, and sort of what did you learn from all of that? Oh my God, you just couldn't put in a book everything I've been able to learn from all of that, you know. It's amazing the sense of memory you develop doing dramatic scenes like that continuously. Uh, you can't study that anywhere, you know, that, that experience is priceless, absolutely priceless and I'll be forever eternally grateful for each and every one of those storylines and what it's given me. Oh my God, I, got, I can say at the end of it, I, I almost had to stop because I was so tired of crying. When you have a dramatic on-screen story and yeah, a bit of dramatic off-screen stories at the same time, you're living kind of a double life. Yeah. And when I cry and when I go there, I'm feeling the same things within my body and as I would in real life. You exactly. have a big cry on set. You're shooting that all day, 12 hours of crying. You're exhausted. I you're bet. absolutely exhausted. I just had to stop for a minute. I just had to stop and smile. It's huge. <laughs> it is really huge. Weird. And really the rate weird. that Neighbours just churns out the episode, uh -huh. you have no choice but to be at the top of your game you have to week be, after all the time, week. All the time, all day, you know, every day. Year round, you episode after episode. Yeah, I mean, that as well must have taught you, you a lot. You can't drop the ball. You just can't drop the ball. Yeah. And then from anything, anything else you do will be slower because Neighbours is one of the fastest produced shows in the world. So you go on from Neighbours and you'll God, be just fine going, oh yeah. <laughs> you'll be yeah. just fine exactly but yeah because we're so used to oh i'm happy now 10 minutes later i'm bawling my eyes out then i'm back to happy you know you shoot all all, all over the place so one minute drew's dead the next minute he's not yeah it's, yeah it's, it's pretty intense all right let's have a quick chat about one of my neighbor's idols my tv mum jackie Jax. woodburn how incredible is she to work oh, with because you have no idea honestly she's she, oh man daddy and jack's together I hope one day you get to watch them on set together because they're just, they're the masters. They're the masters at what they, they are, do. And they do it so well. Both and they're of them. so smart and they're so funny. And I don't know if everybody understands that a lot of what you see on screen and what you love about Carl and Susan on screen is a lot of Jacks and Daddy. Yeah. It's a lot of them in real life that, that gets put into it. The way they do it in shorthand, you know, on set, they make anything work spectacularly. It doesn't matter they what really you give do. them. It doesn't matter what you yeah. give them. Yeah. They will make it work spectacularly. Um, and growing up having the two of them as mentors, oh, how lucky am I? How lucky am I? And we think we're incredibly funny. We all have the same sense of humour. Right. Yeah, so a lot of my sense of humour comes from them. From them. They are wow. absolutely hilarious. That's amazing. And I mean, they've been side by side for 20 yeah. years. You should see them together. I hope I you bet. get to see them together because they're almost telepathic. Yeah, I bet. I just, Seriously, I bet. they're almost telepathic. And I mean, because in, in the show, Susan can read Carl like uh -huh. a book. Yeah. And I'm sure it's the same it's for fine. Jackie it's and Alan. Yeah. yeah, it's great. I know. Sometimes we can't look at each other. I know when I have emotional scenes with Daddy, I, I actually can't look at him until they roll tape. Because I just have to look at him and I'll start to cry. It's crazy. Because we've got such a history and a connection. Definitely. And, uh, 
I love them so much. So do I. Oh, I really I do. Let's have a cry together. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done without them growing up here. That's special. All right, let's move on to something a little bit happier. Okay. TV and stage are two very different things. Oh, yeah. You left Neighbours for a little bit to do Dirty Dancing. You played the role as Baby. Yeah. What was yeah. the differences like there and, and how did that sort of translate? Well, the first thing that comes to my head is simply make it bigger. <laughs> That's the first thing that, that comes to my head. It took me a little while to um, exercise those muscles, kind of vocally, facially, physically, just making it bigger. You get really aware of making small movements on, on TV. It's really quite defined. Your reactions are, are really quite subtle. And it's the opposite when you're on stage. So it did, it did take a little while to, to kind of bring it out and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. And of course, having the audience there is just spectacular. Definitely. Every show is different. An added energy. Oh my God, it's insane. It's insane. And we sometimes forget out at Neighbours because we go out there every day and it's out in the middle of nowhere and we stand in the middle of the studio with each other and we forget sometimes that people are going to watch it. Because <laughs> it's just us standing out there doing what we do every day, yeah. you know, with the crew and, and, and the guys that we know and we've known for, you know, 20 years and we're just doing our thing and everything's okay. And then, oh, that's right, millions of people are going to see this. <laughs> you got to forget about it sometimes. <laughs> so you can't forget that when you're on stage. Musical theatre, there's nothing harder than musical theatre from a performer's perspective. It's exhausting. It's really difficult. And when I came back to Neighbours, I remember, you know, some of the young actors were bitching and moaning about hours and stuff like that and learning lines. And I was like, you're walking and talking. You're not doing a five-minute mambo backwards and heels. It's yeah. all right. Just calm <laughs> down. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, there's a, bit, there's a big difference in the energy level. And, of course, also working on injuries when you're dancing. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're not just performing. And you played opposite Joseph Brown, who Isn't plays Matt funny? now on Neighbours. Isn't How? funny? I reckon it's hilarious. <laughs> it is hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> Especially because he plays a cop on the show. I can't imagine him as a dancer. Really? But I know that's what he's trained in as oh, well. Oh, he's fantastic. One of the best, if not the best, principal male dancers we've ever had in this country. And when we started Dirty Dancing together, we didn't know each other. But I kind of was brought into it with more of an acting background. I hadn't danced for a very long time when I started it. And he was primarily brought in as the dancer. And so we both kind of brought something unique to the relationship that we had together because the yeah. relationship we had together was in intensely intimate what we had to do together we had to really work together as a team because uh, those two characters kind of make one yeah they do don't they yeah it's not like they're two separate characters that exist no. independently they're in the entity. story baby and johnny are one character almost you know the way yeah. they have to intertwine with each other so we had to get on you know <laughs> we had to really work together and we were very 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 lucky that we that we got each other at that point in time and what we could both bring to the table and and how we could bring that to each other and and share it with each other was intensely special so i'll be forever grateful that i got to do that with joe it's strange now because of that because he came you know primarily as a dancer and me as as uh, primarily the actress but it's one of those things you know where worlds collide it was almost funny to see him in that context that was strange. I'm actually seeing him next week. Oh, are you? Oh, cool. This week, actually, Thursday, we're doing a photo shoot with the new leads of Dirty Dancing because right. it's come back to Australia 10 yeah. years after we yeah. started it. But we were so lucky because it had never been on stage before and we spent 12 weeks doing the workshop to develop it from a film to a stage production. So you had a bit of so input John, as well? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's some scenes... Well, in, that's special too. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity Definitely. and and the basis that we created is now kind of a template for what's done around the world and what's being redone here in Melbourne there were some scenes in the musical that weren't in the movie we got to Joseph and I actually would stay back after rehearsals when we were doing the workshop and and develop them and come up with them so there are some elements to the stage show that are entirely created between us and, and our unique relationship. It's very personal, it's really yeah. personal. And when we both watched the show in Germany, which was the first other country to take on uh, sort of a version of our work, we sat there and watched it, watched it, and watching other people recreate those moments 
was almost embarrassing. So it's going to be interesting seeing it again here in Melbourne and seeing how much of that is still there and how much of that still exists. All right, I have a few yeah. fan questions yeah. now. Yeah. First of all, Jake yeah. would like to know your secret to not aging. He uh. wants to know, do you have any special daily skincare oh routines? God. I say I've so aged. Come off it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you do look glowing, though. It's got something I love, that's all. I've got a light from the inside at the moment, so... I can't change that. I can't do anything about that and I can't share that secret. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to say, um, my skincare routine, what do I do? I actually, I'll tell you the God honest truth. I've had like a laser, kind oh, of yeah. laser skin treatment yeah. on my face. And a little while ago, I got what's called RPR underneath my eyes, which is like the Kim Kardashian facial. Oh, wow. I know, right? Fantastic. How's that? I did that. Apart from that, I just always moisturise and cleanse every day. Nothing really special. Yeah. I'm not going to say I don't. I hate how actors do that because everybody has some kind of Everyone's treatment got to do it. Yeah. done now, some yeah. kind of clinical treatment. You Good know? on you for just being yeah, open and honest. absolutely. Right. And I've had jabs of Botox in my forehead. Well, good on you. Yeah. And it looks fabulous. Oh, so well, thank you, you did the right thing. Thank you. Only a little bit. Just a little bit. But I'm going to be honest about it because it's not fair nah. to say that you don't. No. Nah. Is it? That's right. Leroy, no, Leroy would like to know do you appear on the Neighbours Tour and Trivia Night often? Yes, I do the Neighbours Tour. I love doing the Neighbours Tour. I don't actually go on the tour, I kind of meet and greet people when they get back from the tour and do some photos and questions and answers and autographs and stuff. Um, and I probably do that twice a week. And when we do um, the Neighbours Nights, it'll probably be once a month when we start them, um, which we love. One of the funny things about the Neighbours Nights is that as we walk around, we meet and greet every single person and have a conversation with everybody. And the one question we get the whole time is, oh, you must hate having to do this. And we love it. We genuinely yeah. love doing it. I think because, like I said, we're out there in the middle of nowhere and we don't get to have that audience reaction, that audience participation. Yeah. really nice to have that interaction with people who appreciate what you're doing. That's not a chore. I mean, to meet, yeah. to meet people who are grateful for the work that you put in, you know, have a smile on their face because you said g'day, that's not hard work. That's a it's pleasure. Nice. You know, come on. Right, Stella would like to know, yeah. are you anything like Libby in real life? <laughs> um, we have similar hair and I think the one thing that people say is my sense of humour. I think when you meet me in real life and my mannerisms uh, and my, and my humour, you watch the show back and you go, oh, I can see Kimmy now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do that you, when you'll I get see back. It. Yeah, it's funny. But Libby's a lot straighter than I am. She's a lot um, more sensible, not sensible, that's not the word. Um, She's a good straight. girl though. And yeah. She's straight like this, Yeah, you know? yeah. Whereas I'm a bit more beer drinking, swearing. Fiery. Fiery. Uh, you know, half Maltese, half Scottish. Yeah. Full package. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and I think because I, I grew up in a, in a particular area in New South Wales that was very, how should we say it, down to earth. <laughs> Working class, my feet are well and truly on the ground. I'm not the doctor's daughter. <laughs> well, uh, in real life, yeah, you know. that's great. Yeah. Good on you, and you know that shows your talent as an actress too, well, which is another so. thing. And whenever, whenever I get too sweary, sometimes I always get reminded, oh, butter wouldn't melt in little Libby's mouth, Kim. No. Stop it. <laughs> Can we get a bit of a shock? Yeah. Jess would like to know if your daughter shows yeah. any interest in acting, as well. And would you encourage it? Yeah, okay. So my daughter is 11 now, and I've taken some time off work to really put her in the limelight. It's been all about her for the last couple of years. I've been really focused on her. Being a preteen, oh my God. <laughs> and also she's me. And I'm pretty full on. And she's me, but just a little bit a little shorter. Version. Yeah, uh, it, it, she's a real mini me. So she, she needed some one-on-one some -on -one time. So I, did, I took some time off to do that. And she's so good. She's the coolest chick. She's actually my favourite person in the world to hang out with. That's special. Yeah, That's true so though. so sweet. She's funny and she's smart and she's interesting. And she's profound in her own way. I just adore hanging with her. 
she probably not so much hanging with me these days because <laughs> you know it doesn't matter who your mum is she's getting cool now she's getting cool and, and you know i yeah. think i'm cool when i say totes amaze and stuff like that and she rolls her eyes and that's no, not cool mum right no not cool and you've got a lot of years to go to look forward to the rest of that i know when she really gets stuck into her teens i know i know and i'm already you know the eye rolls i'm already so daggy and <laughs> I can't tell you. It doesn't matter who your mum is. And the other kids at school, you know, might say to her, your mum's on the TV and this and that, and she's like, it's just my mum. You know, it's just not cool to her. She does jazz, tap, ballet, acrobatics, musical theatre. And so what I do is I take her four times a week. And like I said, she's my focus these days. She is my first focus. She doesn't have an agent yet like I did when I was a kid. I don't want her to just yet. Uh, if she wants to do it, if she wants to be in the game, of course I will help her do it. But I'm not going to pull strings for her. Yeah. In fact, I'm probably going to be the opposite. And so that's why I make her go to her class. I don't make her, but you have to you encourage. You have her. to pay your dues. You have to pay your dues. You have to train. And she needs to also find her feet. Find on her, her own, own feet that's and right. have a strong work ethic and, and find where she fits in with it, you know. I've been really careful not to project my passions onto mm. her and let her work it out for herself. And this year she's really coming to her own. But I've said to her, if you want to do it, like I did, you have to do all three. Yeah. Because we you've don't have You've got to be a triple threat. You've got to be a triple threat. Especially nowadays, you just, you, you have to. That's right. And she loves it. She just loves it. But we have a very, you know, solid deal when it comes to, there's her kind of performing arts world that she does after school and on the weekends. And then her academic world and yeah. they both have to kind of run in harmony yeah, that is a good way to do it yeah we'll and keep her to grounded to too. too okay yeah. all right she's got to have some kind of skill some kind of sort of trade or some sort of qualification yeah you know because it's too unpredictable what we do and i've been one of the the most fortunate actors in the world to have consistent work for as long as i did you know that doesn't happen for many people well kim valentine libby kennedy Yay! thank you so much and not only I say it as a, an aspiring journalist, but I say it as just me who, growing up, as I've told you, I was such a neighbours fanatic. And Libby was like my big sister. I know, right? So, you know, that what, what she has shown me and the consistent love and appreciation that she just beams from the TV has also been special for me. And it's such a pleasure. And congratulations, neighbours. 30 years. I know, right? Fantastic. Happy birthday.